It looks good. Happy, not because it's a new year. People say, Happy New Year, I'm going to change everything. You know, that doesn't really mean anything to me. The new year is just another number, it's a continuation, it's a yardstick or measurement of our time that we need to be reminded of. That's all it means to me. In time, yeah, I'm, I'm a little older, but uh, that's all it means to me. Okay, that's just me. My wife told me almost 50 years ago, said, you're different. I, said, I know. <laughs> she was right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, if there's any first-time visitors, we want to recognize you. Okay. Yeah, there's one gentleman back there. Welcome. Good to have you here this morning. Uh, we would like to have a record of your visit. If you'd fill out one of those little tiny cards, somebody will help you with it. If you need some help, and just drop it on somebody's chair or their hands, and we'll just keep it. We're not going to come to see you unless you want you to. And if you want to buy us lunch, that's okay. We will come. Yeah. But it's not required. No. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay, continuing. Uh, today's Bible reading and prayer and scripture and that sort of thing is by Mr. David Ponder. Most of you know him, this gentleman right here. You want to come forward? And uh, I know you're anxious to get started. <laughs> I want to read a little bit. Read a little bit today in James, uh, first chapter. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives all generously and without reproach, and it will be given him. But he must ask in faith, Amen. without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind, and that person ought not to expect to receive anything. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time together, and we thank you for, the, for this year that's about to come, Lord. Make us wise in our decisions in the following year. Forgive us all where we fail, and bless this service, Lord. And we give you the honor and the glory for asking thy name. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. By the way, y'all see Brother David limping? I found out why. He had a tradition since he was a kid that on New Year's Eve, when the ball was about to drop about 10 seconds before, he would jump up on the couch <laughs> and he would raise his left leg and hold it up till the count of zero. And he said he did that so he could always start out on the right foot. <laughs> and he fell off the couch. <laughs> so that's his problem. It's just a gift. You're next. I'm glad you're the one that got it. You're next. <laughs> you, you need to repurpose that gift. <laughs> I, it's good to hear everybody laugh. Amen. Amen. Well, because of that cross, we have a friend in Jesus, and we're going to fly Amen. away. Amen. You know, wouldn't it be great that this was a year? Yes. Are you ready to fly away? Amen. That's, Amen. that's the question. That is the question. We are going to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper. I celebrate what Jesus did on that cross. Amen. Gives me cold chills. But you know what? He's not dead. No. He's alive. Amen. We believe in open communion. You don't have to be a member of this church to take communion. Uh, if you take communion and, and you are not a Christian or your sins are not confessed, you're not hurting Christ, you're hurting yourself. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read some scripture, and then we will take our cup. By the way, has everybody got a cup? If not, we'll get you one. Okay. We're going to read the scripture, and we're going to take our cup, and we're going to open the first part. And one of the deacons will read, and then we will pray, and we will all eat and drink together. We could have got it for you. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. <clears throat> this is in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Everyone, please take your cup. Open the bread part, please. I want to ask Brother David to pray, and then we will read the scripture, and then we will all eat together. So please save it, and let's eat together, Brother David. Dear Lord, thank you again for the many blessings that you gave us this last year. And we look forward to the many blessings that you would give us this 2023. Amen. We thank you so much for the sacrifice that you did with your son that his blood will be for us, our sacrifice, yes. so that we may live with you in heaven forever. Amen. Amen. Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat. Same thing. Now please open your juice part. I'm going to ask Brother Ronnie to pray and then we will read and we will all drink together. Brother Ronnie. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to come before you. And dear Lord, we humbly thank you for this special time. And dear Lord, we thank you for what you did on the cross for all mankind. We thank you for that divine blood that was shed for everyone. And dear Lord, again, we just love you and we put all of our trust into you, Father. Because you are the only God and the one God. We love you and we trust you and thank you for what you did for us. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. <clears throat> this do as oft as you drink it. Remembrance of me. Let's drink. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Aren't you glad today that God is a God of second chances? God is the God of third chances and fourth chances. And I don't care how bad you blew it yesterday. The Bible says that God's mercy is renewed every morning. So if you're here today and you blew it in 2022, guess what? It's in the past. Nothing can be done about it. But God said, my grace is sufficient for 2023. So I don't care what you're facing today and I don't care what you've done in the past. God is a God who is willing to clean you up and put your feet on the new path. He is willing to clean you up and say, yes, I will make you a child of the king. Amen. I heard this little story and it said like this, dear God, so far this year has been great. I haven't gossiped about my friends. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, cruel, or rude. And I'm very thankful for this. But God, in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a lot of you to help me get through the rest of this year. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> I didn't know how romantic Brother Lynn was back there, but I heard that over Christmas his wife woke up and said this, that I had a dream that you got me a beautiful diamond ring last night for Christmas. So what do you think it means? Brother Lynn didn't say anything. He just smiled. Christmas morning, she gets up, and under the tree is a beautifully wrapped package. And she opens it up with glee in her eyes and anticipation in her heart. And it was a book that said, Explanation of Dreams. <laughs> Isn't he a great guy? I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians 5. In just a moment, we're going to stand and we're going to read it. Ephesians, the fifth chapter and the 15th verse. And this will apply to everybody here today, everybody listening to the sound of my voice. This will apply to our lives. And I'm sure that you've noticed at the beginning of each new year, all the major newscasts and magazines, they put out special editions recalling things that have happened in the past year. Also, a lot of them predict what will happen in the future. And I remember back in the 80s, they had this prediction that technology is going to be so great for us that we will have a 22-hour work week, that we will be a paperless society, 
and that in 20 years, that would have been the year 2000, in 20 years, our biggest problem would be deciding what to do with our spare time. How many has that problem now? Nobody. Technology is great, but man cannot predict the future. Did you know that? Amen. The only predictor that we know of that is accurate and 100% accurate is God and His Word. And He is predicting that He's coming back one day. The question in 2023 is, are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Now listen, as I look back on 22, I didn't do everything right. I made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done where I could have been spending time with God. So I want you to please stand for Ephesians 5 and verse 15. And we're going to look and see what the Apostle Paul says. And he is talking to Christians. And he is telling us how we need to respond each day. Because God gives us a new day each day. Ephesians 5 and 15 says, Look carefully. Then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Wow. I want to read that first verse again. Look carefully. Watch carefully. Look how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Dear Heavenly Father, please apply this to our hearts today. <clears throat> Lord, if our hearts are right, our mind will be right. God, please let 2023 be the year that was. Let it be the year that we get closer to you. Let it be the year, God, that we depend totally upon you. Let it be the year, God, that we won't make a move or a breath that we do not consult with you first. Lord, thank you for the little church by the road. Thank you for the ones that are here. Thank you for the ones that are not here, God. Just pray that you be with them as well. Now, Lord, I pray that you make me a clean vessel and let your words flow through me. In Christ's name I pray. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I think in this passage, Paul tells us some things that we need to consider. First, our time on this earth is limited. Did you know that? Yes, I was looking at uh, Serenity back there this morning, and I was looking at my grandkids yesterday, and our, our youngest grandson just turned 14. To him, that's old. <laughs> to him, that's old. He knows everything, probably. But I was thinking about my life. And man, how much our time is limited. The psalmist said this in Psalm 39, O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Let me put that in English. God, I'm going to die someday. Am I ready to meet you? Amen. Let me be ready to meet you. Psalms 90 says this, the years, of my, uh, the years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble, and they are soon gone, and we fly away. Amen. How many in this room is your life full of toil and trouble? Amen. Amen. The only answer we have is Jesus. There is no such thing as a perfect life. There is no such thing as a perfect family. The only perfect thing in this universe is Jesus Christ and His blood, and He shed it for you and I. And I realize that some folks to serenity and to my grandkids, 70, 80 years is old. I remember when I didn't trust anybody over 40, and now that I'm 50, or... <laughs> I wish these social security people would quit calling me. I won't be 65 till September. Can anybody else relate? <laughs> but now that I'm older, guess what? That quick. Amen. That quick. Job says a man that is born of woman in a few days and full of troubles. He also said that life is a vapor and it, and it fades away. Did you know that on the internet there is called the death clock? 
You can go on the internet and search this and look for the death clock and you answer some questions and it'll tell you when you are going to die. Listen, my friend, nobody knows when you're going to die except God Almighty. He said it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. The question is not are you going to die. The question is, is are you ready for the judgment? Amen. The Bible tells us not to count on tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Did you know that? Amen. Today, not tomorrow. Today. And you know what? If, if you live to be 80, it's just that quick. If you live to be 90, it's just that quick. God said life is fleeting, and we need to realize that life is short and eternity is forever. Amen. Let's just say you live to be 100. And if by chance we had enough sense to make a chart of eternity... It starts here and it goes forever and you live to be a hundred and I said go over there and mark that hundred years on eternity. It would not even be a pencil point mark. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. The question is are you ready? Paul said not only is our time limited but point two we need to make the most of every opportunity. Amen. Why? Because the days are evil. How many knows this world is evil? Amen. This world is evil. And the closer I get to God, you know what? I realize this world is not my home. Amen. I'm, just, I'm just passing through. And, and in my job, I see it just about every day. People work, they clamor, they strive to, to collect stuff. And then they die and they leave their stuff here. This world is nothing but trouble. Listen, Paul says this world is evil and Jesus said Satan is a robber and a thief and one of the things he tries to rob from us is our time because time is precious. Amen. Just think of the time wasted in sinning. Just think about that. Think of all the time wasted in bars or in gambling casinos or in shallow affairs. Think of all the time wasted in gossiping or spreading rumors. Think about all the times that we made foolish mistakes and we wasted precious time. Amen. Think about that. When I came to Alabama, I had a plan. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I had a two-year plan. I was going to be here two years. I was going to be transferred to Memphis to be sales manager over the whole company. And then I met her. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had another plan. My plan was this, a five-year plan. I'm going to date her five years before I even think about getting married. And that was my plan, and it was perfect, Brother Hugh. I mean, it was right on target until after the second year. And then she threatened to jump off O'Neill Bridge. <laughs> this is my story now. She threatened to jump off O'Neill Bridge if I didn't marry her. No, that's not true. She did come to me and say, hey, either we are or we ain't now. Looking back, she didn't mean it. <laughs> that's my side of the story. But I said, okay. And you know what? I wasted two years when I should have went on and married her because I knew from day one. Here's what I'm saying. Go to God. See, when I, when I made my plan, you know what, Connie? I didn't go ask God. I just said, here's my plan. Mm -hmm. I'm smart. Or at least I thought I was. <laughs> I know what I've been through, and I know where I want to go, and I know this, and I know that. God said, uh-uh, consult me with your plans. Amen. Because my way is always right. I have made a lot of mistakes, but when I follow God, there's never been a mistake one. Amen. So listen, we need to make the most of our time. And what we focus on most of the time is not really, really important. There's a story in the Bible that Sherry's probably going to fuss at me about this. But there's a story in the Bible about two sisters named Mary and Martha. And Martha was focused on the wrong thing, on spending her time. Now listen, Martha was, was preparing a meal. And listen, preparing a meal is really important. Can I get an Amen why I don't have a tie on day. My shirt collar won't button, okay? 
But Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Martha started complaining to Jesus, don't you care that she's not helping me? I got to fix this food. I got to clean this house. I got to prepare this food. I got to serve this food. I got to do all this. And she's just sitting there complaining. Listen, was Martha sinning because she was cooking a meal? No, she was not. Was Martha sinning because she wanted a clean house? No, she was not. However, Martha's problem was she was focused on the wrong thing because Jesus himself was in her house. Amen. Listen, what is the main focus this year? Is it Jesus or is it worldly stuff? And listen, we can get so caught up in focusing on our church that we miss the point that Jesus is the one who we are to focus on. You can get so focused on your humility. I knew a pastor one time who was very humble, but he was so humble he was proud of his humility. Now, does that make sense? But it actually happened. So we need to stay focused because days are evil, and we need to realize that we need to be accountable for our time. And, and we need to realize that, that God wants us to focus on him. There was a man by the name of Richard Swenson, and he, he's a medical doctor, and he wrote a book which he discusses one of the major maladies of our time, and he calls it overload. I got to thinking about that. Number one, we're overloaded, overloaded with commitments. How many in here has got too many commitments? Now think about it. We got too many commitments. We, we, don't, we don't slow down. We, we want to do this and we want to do that and our grandkids want us here and our, and our children want us there and my wife wants me here and my job wants me there and, and we are just, we got too many commitments. Listen, it's okay to say no, I want to spend some time in God's Word. Amen. Next thing, we're overloaded with stuff. How many have got too many possessions? <laughs> now come on, let's be honest. We got too much stuff. I, I looked at our Christmas, and that probably was a sin, I'll be honest. And you know what I enjoyed more than anything? It's not getting stuff. I, I don't need anything. I enjoyed spending time with my family. I enjoyed them watching them interact with each other. I enjoyed hearing my grandson read the Christmas story. I enjoyed hearing my grandson yesterday bless the meal. I, I enjoyed watching the family, how they interact and how they love each other. And, and, and I believe this with all my heart. If, if the Lord does not come back and Sherry and I pass on before he comes back, our family loves each other and they love the Lord enough that they will carry on. That is a blessing. You cannot buy that at the store. Amen. We got too much stuff. We also have an overload, and I'm preaching to myself. And when I say this, if you think I need to preach to myself, say amen. We are overloaded in the area of work. Amen. I work too much. I know I do. I am addicted to work. I'm just being honest. I told, I'm supposed to be off tomorrow. I told Sherry just before church, I may go to work in the morning. You know what? The job is going to carry on without me, Ronnie. And, and I justify it. And, and I'm telling you this because there may be something in your life that you're justifying doing that you need to be honest with your cell phone. I justify it. Well, the Bible says we are to be good workers, and it does. And we'll get to that in a minute. But it doesn't mean that work comes before family. Amen. I, I, here again, I'm being real transparent. My dad was always working. I, I never saw my dad. The people in the church saw Dad more than I did. Is that okay? Yes, it was a different time, I guess. But our family, our relationship to God should be number one. Amen. And our relationship with the family should be number three or number two, and then the church should be number three. Amen. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Now, does that give you an excuse to miss church? No, it does not. You bring your family to church. Amen. But we are overloaded with work. And we also, also have an information over overload. you know that? Mm -hmm. You want to know something, just Google it. And, I, and I, I'm going to tell you, Google is great, but there is something about getting into God's Word and searching for what you're looking for. Amen. I remember as a young youth pastor, 
back in my, I was 18, 19, we had these big thick concordances and you open them, I still got them, I still use them. <clears throat> but my biggest concordance was my mother. I'd call her up, hey mom, I, I need this verse and I can't find it. She'd always find it for me. You know why? Because she loved me. She knew where it was. She, if she didn't know, she knew how to find it. There's something about digging into God's Word. And guess what God will do? If you're looking for a certain passage and you're digging in His Word, another one may pop out at you and say, whoa, wait a minute. He may, he may make your heart come alive. Amen. Listen, everybody knows there is a God even if they say there isn't. But the only way to know God is to get into His Word. Amen. Now the Spirit will convict you and it will tell you that you need a Savior. And, and then your response should be, yes, I need a Savior. But once He comes into your heart, the only way you're going to know God is to get into His Word. Amen. You know, she, when we were dating, she knew how great I was. <laughs> but she just didn't know how great that we'd been married a few years. <laughs> oh me I could go on but you get the picture there's so many things that take our time away from us and in 2023 let's make a difference in somebody's life Amen. I just got to share this and this is not bragging on me it's just the way the world is my wife wanted Marco's pizza for supper last night <laughs> So, okay, being the good husband, that sounds good to me. I call them up. The last time we called, they told me we were going to start delivering in your area. And so the young man answered, and I told him I wanted to place delivery. And he said, what's your address? And I told him, <clears throat> I said, they told me they're going to start delivering here. Well, hold on, sir. Well, he was gone and gone and gone and gone and gone. He come back. I'm sorry, sir. The manager said we're not delivering there. And here's what I said. Okay, fine. I'll just order it and come pick it up. Sherry was sitting there. That's exactly what I said. Dead silence. He said, what'd you say? And I said, I will order it and I'll come pick it up. He said, you're not going to fuss. I said, if, if all I have to fuss about is pizza delivery, my life is pretty good. He said, you're an awesome guy. He said that. So I get there to pick it up, and, and I walk in, and I said, I want to pick up uh, Crumbly. He said, you're the awesome guy. <laughs> I, said, I said, if you had that bad a day, he said, you would not believe. <laughs> and isn't that a shame? Amen. That we are so caught up in ourselves that we cannot be kind to each other. Amen. When I left, he brought me out my pizza, and here's what he said. Please come back and see me. I said, son, what's your name? This is a young guy. He said, my name's Chandler. I, I went back and I went on the internet and I wrote up a great review on Chandler. We, we need to watch our time. We've got time to be kind to each other and to make a difference in their life. And, and we don't have to carry around an eight-pound King James Bible and hit them in the head. We just need to let them see something different in us. And the way the world is now, it is so easy. Amen. I mean, it, it just flabbergasted me. And then as I left the house to go get the pizza, I had to go by the liquor store. They were covered up. And I thought, how many, that ain't funny. That didn't sound right. <laughs> oh, I did not have to. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go past the liquor store. <laughs> okay, moving on. I just lost that, buddy. <laughs> I love y'all too, buddy. How many in here knew what I meant? How many in here thought it was funny, though? <laughs> I had to drive past the liquor store in St. Florine to get to Marco's Pizza in Florence, okay? And it was covered up. 
And I thought to myself, how many people are depending upon their happiness to come out of one of those bottles? The Bible says if we have the fruit of the Spirit, the first one we have is love Amen. and joy and peace. When you, when, you, when you drink that stuff or you depend on something else for happiness, and listen, you may not be addicted to alcohol. You may be addicted to the things that we just talked about, work, stuff, family. You depend on that for your happiness and for your contentment in 2022. Let's change that in 23 because Jesus will give us true love. He'll give us true joy. He'll give us true peace. And he'll give us true contentment that nothing can take away. Amen. Amen. Number three, we need to understand what the Lord's will is for our life. Amen. He says, don't be foolish, but understand what God's will. Now, what do you think God's will is for 2023? Daddy, do you think he wants you to worry? No. <laughs> oh, really? No. Do you think he wants you to be stressed? No. Do you think he wants you to focus on all these things that we just talked about? No. Do, do you think he wants you to doubt him when problems arise? No. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust your bubble. But problems are going to arise in 2023. God wants us to trust Him. Amen. Jesus said, don't be surprised when the world hates you. And don't be surprised when these things happen. He didn't say if they happen. He said when they happen. Because we all are going to have problems. And listen, I want to I nip this in the bud. Once you are born again and blood bought, you are not perfect in the flesh. You're going to make mistakes. Don't let Satan say, well, if you was really saved, you wouldn't want to do this or you wouldn't want to do that. That's, that's baloney. The flesh is still fighting a battle. That's why Paul said to God, he said, God, I want you to increase and I want me to decrease. He still had that battle to fight. 2023 can be the best year of your life. Why? Because God is on the throne. So real quickly, I want to make a couple of suggestions. I'm assuming that since most of you are here this morning, that, that most of you are saved. I know in a group, at even this size, there's probably some that's not. But I want you to establish priorities. I want you to make a, 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 a decision today to pray for God to pull you closer. Amen. Now, I didn't say save you. You can't decide to get saved. God has to call you. But you have to want to be closer to God. He, he's the one that's waiting on you to say, I want more of you, God. And this will affect every decision you make in 2023. Amen. If you do not go to God with any of your decisions and all of your decisions, I don't care how small you think they are. God is the one that will guide your footsteps. Amen. You also need to make some time for God. You do what's important to you. Did you know that? I, when I used to bird hunt, loved it. It was, it was my passion. I would, I would actually leave work, Sherry, to go bird hunt. You know why? Because I liked it. I scheduled it. I planned for it. I was ready for it. I had my shells. I had my gun. I had my dogs. I, I had my, my hunting buddy. We, we, we went because it was important. Schedule time to spend with God. Amen. It's the most important thing you will do. Amen. Start your day off with God's Word and listen to Him and let Him guide you. Also, you need to schedule some time to pray. And when I say pray, don't just talk, listen to God. Most of the time, God is talking and we're not listening. How many men in here has your wife ever said she told you something and you didn't hear it? I'm the only brave one in here. <laughs> now, in my case, I know she didn't tell me that because I would have heard it. A lot of times God's talking to us and we ain't listening. 
We, we got too much going on, Hugh. We, we got the TV on. We got the uh, Amazon on. We got Alexa on. I mean, hey, I can be up in my office now and Sherry can just drop in on me and there's a screen. Got her picture, buddy. I can't even get away. <laughs> or my dog has learned steps and here he comes. <laughs> schedule time. Also, schedule time for your family. If there's somebody important to you, let them know it. And I won't talk to the men right now. The world tells us that we, we are men. We're supposed to be rough, tough, and ready. Listen, men have emotions and men have feelings. Share that with your wife or with your girlfriend or with your son or with your daughter. Let them know how you feel. And one day it's going to be too late. Jesus was not ashamed to cry in front of everybody. Make time, make time for your family. And then, and then we ought to be good workers. That's where I was headed. Be good workers. I didn't mean be a workaholic, but if you work eight hours a day, give your boss eight hours a day. If he calls you in, you go in. I'm, I'm sorry, that's just what, that's, you are setting the example and you could be the example to that boss that could lead him to the Lord. Amen. Heard a story one time. A little game we play called I Wish It Were. I wish it were next week or I wish it was next month or I wish this day was over. I heard a story, said a guy went to college and just hated it, but she told herself, if I can ever get out of college and get married and have children, I know I'll finally be able to enjoy life. So she stuck with college. She went to classes every day and finally graduated. Then she got married and had children, and she discovered that children were a lot of work. Hello? So she told herself, if I can just get these kids raised, then I'll be able to relax and enjoy life. But about that time... The kids were entering high school. Her husband said, guess what? We don't have enough money to send our kids to college, so I guess you're going to have to go back to work. She didn't want to, but she knew he was right and they needed the money, so she went back to work and she hated it. <clears throat> but she told herself, if I can just get these kids out of college and get all these bills paid, then I can quit work and I can enjoy life. Anybody relating so far? Okay. Okay. Finally, the last child graduated from college. All the bills were paid. She walked into her boss's office and said, I quit. He said, oh, you don't want to quit now. If you stay with us just another eight years, you'll have a pension for the rest of your life. Well, she thought, well, I don't want to work another eight years, but there's all that money and security that I can't turn it down. So she worked for another eight years. Finally, she and her husband retired at the same age. They sold their house and they bought a retirement cottage, a cottage. And then they sat down on the swing of their front porch and they looked at the family picture album and dreamed about the good old days. What's important? Someone said life is what's happening to you while you're making plans to do something else. And that's certainly been true in my life. And by the way, God leading me to Alabama and Mary and Sherry was the best thing that ever happened to me. His way is always right. And so next this coming year, I want you to have enough happiness to keep you sweet, but enough trials to keep you dependent upon God. I want you to have enough sorrow to keep you human, to, to keep you human but enough hope to have you dependent upon God. Enough failure to keep you humble but enough success to have you dependent upon God. Enough friends to give you comfort and enough wealth to meet your needs so you can be dependent upon God. Enough enthusiasm to make you look forward to tomorrow and enough determination to make each day better than the day before and to realize that God is the one that supplies everything. And I want us to pray this prayer. Lord, help us to use the 8,760 hours of this year in the wisest way we can. And we've already used 11, nearly 12 of them. So what do you want in 2023? If you do not change, 
If you keep doing the same thing you did in 2022, you're going to get the same results. But if you want to be closer to God in 2023, it's all up on your shoulders. God is standing there right now. He said, I will answer if you call. He's not going to force Himself on you. He's not going to open your head, unscrew the top, and pour His Word into it. He's going to ask you to ask Him for more Him and less of you. I want you to stand to your feet. Mary, would you come and play something softly? I feel today every one of us ought to be at this altar. This, this is a fresh slate according to the calendar. And I, I'm like Brother Hugh, it's just another day. However, however, you can use this day to start a new life. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, touch the hearts of each one here. Lord, every one of us need to be at this altar right now.